Joystick Drift, a $20 billion problem for gamers. Let's make a product that fixes it. If you put an apple in your fridge, it will last for about two months. That's the shortest time most game controllers last. For most people, that's a problem because game controllers can cost up to $250. This is a brand new potentiometer from an unused joystick module from the new DualSense Edge. And this is a potentiometer with drift. The drifting joystick is missing material where the viper arms are in contact with the resistive material. This will cause poor connection and generate a lot of electrical noise, causing the drift. I made this DUI double banana potentiometer to make a point about all potentiometers ever made or that ever will be made. The banana controller takes a few minutes to get used to, but it's perfectly capable of controlling the game. However, it doesn't work well over time, because it's just grind away the banana. The banana is too soft and suffers the same fate as our PS4 potentiometer, only faster. This is because a phenomena that is very hard for controller making companies to understand. Rubbing materials against each other causes material removal. So let's just not try to fix it with our own potentiometer. The problem we're trying to solve is called position control. We have a rotating axle and we need to know its position. A better solution for this has been used in the control of electric motors for over 40 years. We slap a magnet on the motor axle and track the magnetic field with hall sensors. Here is a chip that can track a rotating magnetic field and give us a varying voltage based on the rotation. It does exactly the same thing as the potentiometer, but without the rubbing. Remove the pot and there's our joystick axle. We need to make the magnet rotate when the axle of the joystick is rotating. That can be done with a simple magnet holder. But before we continue, we need to run our first experiment to find out if our magnet is strong enough for the sensor. Ideally, we should have an AGC of 64. AGC is automatic game control, which is kind of the microphone volume for the sensor. But it's not for sound, it's for the magnetic field. And the magnet needs to be centered. For our next experiment, our goal is to see if we can detect the rotation of the joystick. At this point, we only need to position our sensor close to the magnet. We'll make a sensor holder in its simplest form, because if the experiment fails, we won't have wasted time on a complex holder. From our old video, we remember that pushing the joystick to its bottom position would give us about 0 volt, and the top position about 3.3. This is what we need to replicate. However, when we power up the sensor, we see that it only gave us 1.2 volt for the bottom position and 1.8 volt for the top position. The chip is designed to track a full 360 degrees, but we are only moving it a total of about 50 degrees. Thankfully, the chip maker has predicted this scenario can happen and they made two settings we can adjust. We can program the chip to recognize our desired zero volt position and our maximum voltage position. After setting the bottom position, the voltage goes from 1.2 volt to zero and our 1.8 volt top position goes to 3.3 volt. Perfect, another experiment done. It's time to make a prototype that can be fully assembled and tested in a real controller. We start with a new CAD model, a magnet and its holder. Our goal is to create a plastic part that can hold both the circuit board for the sensor and act as a bushing for our magnet holder. After a few iterations that uses the same plastic knobs and guides as originals, we end up with a solution using screws. What matters most is to create a circuit board prototype and order it from our friends over at PCBWay. Making the circuit board is pretty straightforward and our first design looks pretty cool. We now have a digital fully working prototype and all we have to do is wait for the circuit board. But that's going to be in the next video. Uh, okay, I guess we could also do it right now. Let's continue. As normal, I get my PCBs from PCBWay I get the PCBs for free, they have offered to pay me to sponsor the channel. 
But for now, I'm just happy with free PCBs. Because then I can just change to another vendor if I want to, without thinking about the money. But there's like no reason, because PCB Way is the one that I'm most happy with. They never bitch about anything about like weird PCBs, like having gold edges and all this other kind of stuff, which other PCB manufacturers really don't want to do. And they just have the absolute fastest manufacturing time and excellent quality. And let's not forget that black matte solder mask. So thanks PCBWay. First we apply solder paste through a stencil, so we'll get paste only on the pads for the components. Then we place the components on top of the circuit board and our sensor, and then we fry it all in an oven and the solder paste becomes solidified metal which create electric connection while also holding the component to the board. This project is going to be made open source once I'm done with the prototyping phase. And because of that, I want the project to be made out of easy accessible parts and manufacturing methods which is easy accessible for most people. My design is resin 3D printed, but it is also possible to print it on the normal FDM based 3D printer if you're able to do some post-processing. In order to minimize the risk of the joystick hat colliding with the add-on Hall Effect sensors, I did not add a connector for programming the position chip. Instead, I'm going to program this device with a special robot that I made. However, for the next version, I will use a connector, so you won't have to use a robot. This project have been through months of different iterations on the mechanical parts. Let's put together one of the latest design and test it in a controller. This joystick has some serious drift issues. It's almost uncontrollable on a low dead zone setting, and it draws some incredible jaggedy lines, which is a sign of a lot of electrical noise caused by the analog sticks. I actually need a 25% dead zone in order to just use this controller. Let's open it up, pull out the main board, start our soldering iron, and get ready the pop meters to be desoldered. First, I'll attach the circuit board to the robot. I usually do this with the circuit board in my hand, but it's easier to film it this way. First, I'll start with applying some silicone grease to behind where the magnet holder should be. These magnets are diametric magnets and have a north and a south pole on each side of the ring. These are friction hold against the axle. I then apply another layer of silicon grease to the front of the magnet and around the holder. Then it's time for attaching the magnet to the magnet holder. I then attach the housing and gently screw it down with M1.4 screws. They screw directly into the metal shield of the joystick. I then see that the joystick moves very easily. And at the end, it's time to screw down the circuit board and again make sure it's free moving. It's now time to calibrate the joystick. First I'll calibrate the end positions. I'll do this in a rotating fashion. I then calibrate the perfect center point by releasing the joysticks many times from each direction. And then the machine starts offsetting the start and end point so the center point from our calibration routine will match the center point hard programmed in the controller. And there you have it. It's time to test it. First, it can draw super nice curves, meaning 
it doesn't draw any jaggedy lines, meaning that it's very low noise and there's good interaction between the X and Y axis. Even on high speeds, you can see it doesn't draw any jagged lines and it draws really beautiful curves, which means low noise from the sensor signal and high precision and accuracy in capturing the angles of the joysticks. Dead zones for absolutely no drift when realizing it from the sides would be 1-2%. to In-game with no drift will probably be more up to 3%. That is something I'm super happy with because this controller did not use to even work. It wasn't playable. Let's see how they look at the gamepad test here. They're well centered, very responsive, nice smooth movements. To test for lag, I made a new setup for my machine to accurately test responsiveness and those sort of things. And uh, this chart is from movement from center to the edge in about 0.2 seconds, so it's a really fast move. But from the result you can see that the Hall Effect stick actually reacts faster to the change and it's also a nicer line because it has a lot less noise. So super happy with these results. War zone 2, let's get the dead zones to zero to see what happens. Right off the bat, there's no drift, but I'm pretty sure I can get it to drift if I do very small movements and then just like release the stick. If I do big movements and just release the sticks, they're probably just going to go to zero and there will be no drift, but there will, will be drift uh, if you have very small movements and this is natural. This is because the mechanical spring does not center the joystick well enough and all other joysticks that has zero drift with this kind of joystick are just using some kind of trick to do it. And the only way they can actually get them to have zero drift is to add a dead zone of some sort in the controller. So they basically have just moved the dead zone from the game to the controller. I'm really not sure that they intentionally do this because I, I feel it's somewhat misleading marketing because everyone is running around saying that these controllers have zero drift because they have whole effect sensors. But that's just not true. That's not how the world works. Because, you know, I could I can blow on this joystick with a straw and it's going to move the position. That's just how sensitive it is. Because this sensor is both extremely accurate and precise, it's going to measure exactly where the joystick is. And if that joystick do not stop in the center, it's not going to be measured to be in the center. This joystick will work on any controller that uses 3.3 volts to power it and uses the Alps Alpine joystick and has room for the whole sensor packages. The other controllers like PS5 controller and Xbox runs on 1.8 volts and they need more components which is going to be in a later iteration. So we got it working beyond my expectations, so what is next for this project? When can I shut up and take your money so you can get this product? This first prototype stage is now over and I will be moving into the next prototype which most likely will be the prototype that will be exactly like the launch product. As of today's date, if you are a patron tire of the prototyper, you can DM me right now on Patreon with your address and I will ship you one of these first early prototypes. Those will be complete sets of joysticks, not just the add-on. So I'm sorry you most likely missed the opportunity to get this first prototype, but there's going to be another chance. The next prototype, which most likely be the prototype that will be exactly like the shipped product, will be limited. I just put a cap on my patron tire. Once we are done with this test phase, which probably will take about one month from people who will be getting their prototypes, it will be open for sale through the normal sources. I have been getting a lot of these comments for good reason. People who worry that there's going to be a large company that comes and buys the things I make. It's really about time I'm just gonna tell my intentions with this entire thing. I have no plans in making a gaming company, nothing like that. I have no plans selling anything that I make 
as property rights. My intention is to be a single individual that sits in his garage and does whatever he can to push technology forward as a single individual. I have a lot of respect and feel very honored for all the offers I've been getting, but I don't mean to be rude, but no thank you. There is no amount of money in the world that convinced me otherwise, and this is a project I've been working on for four years. And I knew that if I was able to do the stuff I'm doing now, this time will come where I have to say no to this stuff. And let me tell you, it is extremely hard to say no to money when you actually need it. But I'm a bit over 40 years old now, and if there's one thing I learned, is that all great things I have achieved in my life usually starts with going through some suffering. So we are right on track. When the prototype phase of the Hall Effect joystick is done, I will open and give away all of my IPs, all of my designs for free without any license. You can take it and do it, whatever you want with them. You don't need to pay me anything. You don't even need to attribute me. It's just going to be all open. You can say it's yours. You can say you made it. I don't care. But when I do that, I'm going to say no to a lot of money. It is important that if you like what I'm doing and you have the option to support me, that you can do that through Patreon. And I will continue to push technology forward, give you access to the stuff that you're not supposed to have to a price you're not supposed to pay. And my plan also is to learn you how to do this. So you can do the exact same thing as me, because if you help me out, I'll promise I'll come back for you.